Good morning again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm going to do another case here about uh, surgical orthodontics. I, I realize that most of the people that I'll be uh, talking to over the years won't be uh, set up to do surgery uh, as this, but you may. And we have a lot of uh, real good old surgeons in the country and also around over the world that uh, do orthodontic uh, surgery. They don't do as much of it now as they used to because of the uh, serious expense that it uh, costs in doing this. But in this particular case, uh, I didn't think I could come close to helping this young man. I guess if there were absolutely nothing else, I could have made him <laughs> made it a little better than, than it is, but not uh, really severe. So I elected uh, to get this done by a, an old surgeon in Dallas who's one of the leading uh, men in the country on oral surgery. So let's get into it right quick here and I'll try to uh, run through it just to touch on the important parts of it. Uh, we'll let me get this little error going. Uh, you can see the chin is just extremely short, the neck and he's got this adenoid looking face and this is just really uh, in a pretty bad shape. I won't take too much time with the uh, regular uh, orthodontic, uh, the surgery, uh, and just the regular orthodontics, I mean. Uh, he's a nice, nice young man. And just as we finish this case, his folks moved to Colorado uh, and uh, I know that the surgeon was a little worried because he left uh, a little before he really would like for it to, but I think we had him uh, tied down pretty good where we could uh, keep this uh, going and I had him wearing retainers and everything good. So let's go through it. It was, uh, I just turned this case over completely to the surgeon and he told me what to do, what he wanted to do. I've worked with him for on many cases, and uh, he knew we knew how to handle the orthodontic part. So uh, this is where we took the bicuspids out, uh, or he did, uh, and this is just to show this right fast. And we lined the guy up, and it had all going good. And he told me where he wanted to section the arch wires. Now some surgeons like to do that. They, see, he cut the arch wire right in here, and I think another place or two. Uh, I don't see it right there to start with. But in other words, he was going to do little patches of uh, spots in here more than another. He would do some cuts, cuts in the bone structure up here to shift that around. And he'd give this guy a chin there, make him look a little better. Uh, so anyway, uh, here, here it goes. You can see where the front part is cut away. And the old surgeon would show you what he wants to do. And, uh, and you just follow his instruction, let him tell you what he wants to do, and he knows you know how to do the orthodontics, and that's all he wanted. So we finished that all out like that, and uh, put a retainer in. I put a wraparound retainer, and this is uh, kind of going through. This is the first uh, panorex, and then here is the bottom now is lined up and you have this is left this in right here kind of like a three to three retainer we would probably bond something on the uh, backs of this especially if he's going to be out of the state 
to leave. So this is 1990 and we got it looking like that and it went from that to that and from this to this. And the lower look something like that, and now it's like that. So, but we took a terrifically difficult case, and it, uh, the orthodontics for me was a lot simpler there. Now, I do not like these uh, little removable retainers here. They're too easy to lose. I would rather bond that thing on the back side of the HC and hold it like that and wear those uh, removable retainers. Like they snap in over there, but people lose them. You can even swallow them. Uh, so I don't care for them. And, uh, but you can bond that too. That's just a matter of uh, he wanted that. And so we uh, made it for him. So here is the, uh, showing you the x-rays. Uh, he took a, of course, took his wisdom teeth out. He did all that and the bicuspids and set him up for me. And this is again the same way. And this is a nice example. You could set this tooth up really easy. And you come out here with a like that. You raise it up. You can straighten this tooth up without doing anything. You know, put a hook in this and bond this to these teeth. And bring this up and hook it over here. And this would be like that. And it'll set that tooth right up. It'll move back and then you pull it forward. And uh, that would be no problem at all. So we, I don't know whether he did that or I did it. But here we are with the arch wire coming back and it's bold. I think it's got a little circle in there that's going to set it up. Yeah, here it is, one wire. And this, this is set up that way to correct that part right there. Uh, now there that is, and of course once you get it like that, then you can pull it forward. You have to put some type of a bend so that the roots move forward with the crown and then that. So when we finished it out, we made it where we bring that up to that point. And here it is at this point. And now he's done this surgery and you can see these little plates he's got up in the upper arch where he sectioned that part up there. They shortened the uh, length of the jaw here. Like, and see the screws he's got in. And I think he may have done a genioplasty on him too. But let's look at the result of the total thing now. That's, this young man's got screws all in his head and these little plates that hold it in position. And uh, when he left, he was doing good. Now they advanced this mandible this far in here. So he's got a big gap. They take the mandible and cut on one side. They'll go up one side and then cut down on the other side and fracture it off, slide it forward, and then screw the thing together. You see down here like that. It's been, this is broken up, and then you can link this, and then screw the parts together here. And uh, that will fill in with bone and be just as strong as ever uh, in that. And there's how much you advance the mandible, you see. And there's the screw in the side holding that thing together. 
and it is. And here we go, the sixth of Nanny. We have finished the young man, and that's the way he looks. And he left going to Colorado, I think. And he had a, brought his chin out and the vertical height of everything. And you can see the screws and everything he's got up in here. The screws in that and this part here. Now he didn't do the genioplasty that I was talking about. But look at the metal parts holding the maxilla in place like that and took a really bad case and did a good job of it. And I'm going to let's say goodbye and uh, hope you get something from this, even though you may not want to do surgical orthodontics. You know something about it and it just makes the, the orthodontics is easier for the guy doing the orthodontics if they do this surgery. If you go in here trying to correct something like this by by yourself, uh, there's a lot of more work that you'd have to do. So uh, I was glad to have the surgeon help out of this uh, young man. I'm sure is still enjoying this. So thank you for watching, and I'll go ahead and and uh, close out. But I think you ought to know a little about surgical orthodontics, whether you want to do it or not, but it's not uh, all this glorious thing. Uh, it makes orthodontics easier, really, so I don't mind doing the surgical part with a, uh, an oral surgeon that I trust and everything. I know what to do. So thank you for watching, and I'm going to uh, close out. And uh, we'll hope to see you again and hope you'll join our group and subscribe to this. And uh, I realize there's not too many of you interested in surgical orthodontics, but I think it, that's part of it today and we should know what can be done with these uh, bad cases like that. So I'll say goodbye. And I'll stop it right here.